always love talking to Coach Terry Bowden on Fridays. You got to check out the Bowden Blitz on Sports Grid. It's badass, and you can follow it at the Bowden Blitz. A legendary career, a legendary family, and a badass on Coast to Coast. Coach, I want to start with what you and I were just talking about. So, uh, you know, when Bear Bryant was there in Tuscaloosa, and then when Nick Saban was in Tuscaloosa, they had it. They had it. I mean, like the it thing that we're talking about. And then they had seven coaches that didn't have it. And then I don't have anything bad to say about DeBoer. I just know that that football team doesn't have it. No, and you're exactly right. That's a unique place. And having having coached at three universities in Alabama and having coached against the Crimson Tide, I have a great feel for it. There's just it's hard to be the head coach at Alabama because they can sense it. It's it's a unique personality, uh, and the players and the team uh, are a part of that team. And so Bear Bryant, then seven coaches, then Nick Saban, and I've said before that DeBoer was a was a really good choice. I just want to see how he would react to it. And right now, I don't think they can go into LSU and beat LSU at night. I just don't think see that about the team doing that. I mean, this guy Kelly, his best work has been under the lights at Death Valley and not during the sunshine. In the daytime, they've been beatable. At nighttime, they've been unbeatable. I tell you, I've coached there in the nighttime a lot. It's almost impossible to win. The crowd gets bigger. They get louder. It's a tough place. I think they've been drinking all day, but they are hard to beat. (laughs) I've been there with Florida State. I've been there with Auburn. And and I'm telling you, it's the most unique place you've ever seen. They say Texas A&M, too, and I've coached there as well, is about the same. But I don't think at night there's any stadium tougher to beat and I don't think Alabama's going to win this one at LSU this week. No, listen, I've been to I've been to both, and yeah. I, and I I will give you that Kyle Field is unique, yeah. and it's the twelfth man and all the rest, and they got a big crowd and a lot of people there. But it cannot. I'm sorry, it cannot hold a candle to no. Death Valley. Let's stop here. I mean, I I'm not a Kyle Field. I I got seven or eight stadiums better than that. I'll be here all day. I, like, I'm here all the week. I'll tell you better places to play football. And you know it. You know it. Well, you know, I've, I've, like I say, I've, now, I'm, I live in Louisiana now. I've coached at ULM. I've been here, and I coached against them. But it's still, and I have coached at so many places. I have been to Michigan. I've been to, to Southern California, to Alabama, to Georgia. It's a, it's a unique experience there. I do have to think it's something to do with the personality of the Cajuns and the way they react at night. It's, it's a, it's a, it's an incredible experience. And I don't think Alabama, I think, I mean, Alabama's a good football team. I don't think they're as good as LSU right now. If LSU can get rid of throwing, if they can run the football just a little bit, I think they win the game. All right, let's talk about uh, Miami and Georgia yeah. Tech. And Bobby now listen, this game reminds me of the Duke game. I don't think, you know, Duke was six and two. They're, better than Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's been very average this year. They've had their problems. And I know everyone thinks they're going to beat Miami, but Duke went up on Miami, and then they got their ass spanked. Uh, Now, I think this team may throw a 10-minute punch, but I still don't think they can stop this freight train. No, I mean, mean, you're talking about Cam Ward is the number one quarterback in the country stat-wise. They have the number one offense in the country. And, and, And I think a team like Georgia Tech, whose quarterback is injured, who may not play, their, their day is over. They started the season with a win over Florida State, but they have not progressed throughout the season. They don't. They likely don't have their quarterback, and Miami is smelling that playoff. They're smelling that championship, and I think the, the more this thing goes in the season, the better Miami gets. Uh, were you surprised that the AD said that Billy Napier was coming back uh, to Gainesville and I think they're going to get beat in Austin at Memorial by the Longhorns. But do you think they're making the right choice in bringing him back? Because the bottom line is he's been there and all he does is lose. You know, it's funny. He was with me at Auburn. He was he was the assistant AD when I was at Auburn. And I'm not so sure he makes the final decision. I, I, I just, I've been around this business too long. And ADs don't make that final call. They're told what to do. Now, he, you want to say, we're with you, do the best that you can, but I'm not so sure he's going to make the final call at Florida. So let's just wait and see. 
because there's a lot of things and a lot of factors that come involved. Texas beat them easily. Texas is going to, oh, Texas. The only thing with Texas this year is a matter of how much they're going to win against them. I think Texas is going to win the game. It's just, can you go with 21 points? I'll be honest with you. They've got a walk-on quarterback playing at quarterback for Florida. And I think Texas gets the 21. I think they, they, they take the spread and they go with it. Yeah, I do too. Once they lost their quarterback Langway, they're in trouble. Georgia at Ole Miss. I think Georgia is the most dangerous team in that 12 team uh, field. They can beat anybody. Well, you got it. Georgia is, I mean, I mean, they're really something. Ole Miss and Georgia, it's a it's gonna be a great game. I I still wonder about Ole Miss when they play the better team. Georgia continues to play better and better. The, but their quarterback, Carson Beck, has thrown interceptions. He's not been the quarterback that he was last year. He has got to keep from turning the ball over. I know he's heard about it all week, but I think he will solve that problem. I don't think you'll see him throwing interceptions like he did three of them last week. Uh, and if he doesn't throw interceptions, I don't think Georgia, uh, anybody can beat Georgia. So I was watching the Indiana game last week, as you know, my alma mater, and I, I always went there for basketball. I worked for Bob Knight. I never once went to a football game in five years. Now all of a sudden they're good. And I mean, they mean business. Offensively, 47 plus a, a week. Defensively, top five in the country at everything, stopping a run, uh, giving up yards, giving up points. So they took a punch from Michigan State and then beat the living snot out of them in East Lansing. And I don't even think Michigan's very much better than Michigan State. What happens in Bloomington tomorrow? You know what? I, I don't question who's going to win this game. I question where Kurt Signet is going to be next year or the year after. Because oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Who would have thought, would have thought Michigan – uh, would be going into Indiana and an underdog dish after winning the national championship. And so I know Kurt Signetti, I've known him all my life. And I'm just, I'm thinking this guy is going to go somewhere very quick. Oh God. You know, I, every, my day was going great. And then you had to come <laughs> along and kick me in the teeth like a horse. Uh, let's talk about Colorado. I think they're yeah. in trouble in Lubbock. I thought that Texas tech win at Ames last week was the best football game I watched. Well, they are. I'm going to tell you, Texas Tech has got them on a roll right now. Now, they are a great passing team, and Texas Tech's weakness is in pass defense. But I really think when you go into Lubbock and you play them right now, I think you got to roll with Texas. I think Texas Tech, they have a lot of confidence right now. They won a great game last week, and I see them beating Colorado in Texas Tech in Lubbock. I think BYU goes to Rice-Eccles and sucker punches the Utes. I think they're real average, and I think BYU is fun. No, you know, BYU. Yeah, BYU is the story of the year, I think, in that conference, because Utah was going to be there. They were going to be the conference contenders, a chance to play for the, the national championship. But it's all been about BYU, and I don't see them losing this game. This is a great rivalry, but BYU has all the momentum, and I would ride that. Uh, the, the entire season, I would ride BYU. Obviously, Penn State is back to playing teams that they'll cover against. They can't beat good teams or highly ranked teams or Ohio State, but they can beat Washington's ass. <laughs> you know, I went to West Virginia, and our rival, we Pitt and Penn State, we right. just couldn't right. stand to lose. I, but you know what? I don't know if they'll win. I think they'll win that game, I will say this. But this is another year of Paul Burns. Not quite, not quite there. 